This video is about how to make forecasts using non-time series based approaches or cross-sectional approaches uh, like we read about uh, this week. And so the idea of these non-time series based approaches is that they're based just on predictor variables, not time series components at all. So we don't refer to the previous step in the time series at any point. And to look at that, uh, we're going to keep working with the data from the portal project, and we're going to see if we can predict NDVI, which is this measure of how green the system is, how much plant matter is there, based on precipitation. We're going to do a couple of things to help us do that. Uh, we're starting uh, in the same place where we started last time, so I've already loaded the forecast library. We've already loaded in the portal time series data, and we've already converted the date column in that data to an actual date. Uh, if you haven't got those set up yet, pause for a minute and make sure you're set up and ready to go. We're going to add a couple of additional things here uh, that are going to help us deal with first the fact that uh, the response between vegetation and precipitation in the system that we're looking at is kind of complicated. So we're going to need to do a little data manipulation. So we're going to add the dplyr library to let us manipulate the data. And we're also going to be actively working with this date column, treating them as dates. And so I'm going to load the looper date package to help make that easier. So library and then looper date. The way precipitation dynamics work in this system is they tend to be monsoonal. So there are short periods of the year where most of the rain occurs and that rain uh, collectively influences the plant growth during that season. And so we're going to do a little bit of data manipulation to get there using dplyr. And so we're going to focus on this monsoon period. And so we'll call uh, the data that we're going to work with monsoon underscore data. We're then going to assign that the output from a dplyr pipeline. So we're going to take the data that we started with. We're then going to use the pipe symbol. So for anyone who hasn't used pipes, that's percent greater than sign percent or control shift M if you don't want to type those three characters over and over again. We are going to pull out the month and year columns from our date. That's going to allow us to focus on the particular months when the monsoon is happening. And so we do that with mutate, which is going to add new columns. Uh, the first one we'll call month. And uh, to do that, using looper date to extract a month from a date, we set, use the month function and then the date column. And so this will give us just the month part of the date back. And then we also need the year. So we'll do the same basic thing. We'll say we're going to create a new year column. And that's going to be equal to the year function from looper date run on date. And so again, that's going to extract the year from this date column that we've been working with. So we've now got our original data plus a month column and a year column. We're going to add another pipe. And now we're going to filter the data just to focus on the monsoon portion of the year. And so we'll say filter month and then percent in percent. So this will only give us the months that are in the following vector. And then that vector is going to be July, August, and September. So the months are 7, 8, and 9. So this is now going to just pull the data from July, August, and September. We're then going to create another pipe. 
And now we're going to group the data by year so that we can then calculate the <clears throat> total precipitation during each year during the monsoon period and the average NVVI during that same period. So that's group underscore by, and it's the year column that we're gonna group by, another pipe, and then the final step is that we are going to summarize our data. We're gonna get one column called monsoon rain, which is equal to the sum of the rain column. So this will get the sum of the rain in July, August, and September during each year. And then the monsoon and DVI. And since we're measuring greenness here, we'll talk about the average greenness in this period. And we'll do that as the mean of NDVI. Okay. And so if we run this and look at monsoon data, we'll see that now what we have is for each year, we've calculated the total amount of precipitation that happens during this monsoon period and the average NDVI during that period. And so now we'll do a quick visualization of this data, a quick exploratory analysis to see if there's a good chance that we can build a good model and make predictions from it. And so we'll do that using the plot function. And we want to plot precipitation as the causal variable. So we'll put that on the x by saying monsoon underscore data and then the dollar sign to get out the monsoon underscore rain column. And then the response will be NDVI. So we'll plot on the Y monsoon underscore data dollar sign and then the monsoon underscore NDVI column. And if we look at this graph, we can see that there's a pretty reasonable relationship here. And to at least a first approximation, it's relatively linear. And so we should be able to start making predictions for this uh, using uh, a linear model. So then we're on to step four, where we want to build uh, and fit a model for this relationship. We'll use that linear model we just talked about. And so we can do that uh, by typing rain model, that's where we'll store our model, is equal to, and then we can make a linear model using LM, and then quotes, and now we need to give it the form of the model that we want, and in R we specify that as the Y variable, so monsoon underscore NDVI is related to with the tilde and then the x variable for our simple linear model monsoon underscore rain and then a comma and we're going to say that the data is move down so we can see this data is equal to monsoon data. And if we look at this model, we can see that it's going to be a sort of standard regression model. It's got two coefficients, an intercept and a slope, uh, and then a bunch of other information uh, about how it fits. And so this is literally a linear regression that we just did. And so then how do we make forecasts from this kind of model? And the idea is we do it in the same way that we did it before. We're going to use the forecast function. The forecast function is actually a wrapper around predict for those of you who are familiar with that. And this kind of model, unlike time series models, requires that we have forecast values for the driver. So in other words, the way we would do this in a real scenario is we would take the forecast values for precipitation 
over this period, we would feed those in as our predictor variable, and then we would use them to get out a predicted value for NDVI. So we would create a forecast here, like we had before. We could call it rain forecast. We'll use our forecast function again, like we did before. Forecast takes the model that we created as its main input. And now in this case, because we have external driver data, we have an external driver, we have to provide forecast with the information on those drivers values. And to do that, we pass it a value for an optional argument called new data. And new data is uh, a data frame that contains the same column. It contains information for the same column with the same name that's being used as the predictor variable. And so in this case, we want a data frame with a monsoon rain column. And we'll include four values in there to make four predictions for four future seasons. And so we can create this using data.frame. And we're going to have a monsoon rain column. That's the th column that we need. And then in this case, we'll just add four values for monsoon rain. Let's say we've got uh, 120, 226, 176, and 244. We're kind of running off the screen here, but there we go. We've got this whole forecast function here. And so this will now make forecasts for what the system should show for NDVI if these were the future predicted values uh, for precipitation. And then just like other forecasts, we can look at the output of those forecasts using plot. And so we'll plot our rain forecast. And this is the result that we'll see. Uh, we can see the linear model that was used to fit the data. That looks pretty good. And we have forecasts for each of the four precipitation values that we entered. And so here, if the precipitation is predicted to be 120, this is what we would predict the NDVI to be, along with the associated prediction intervals again. So we would expect 95% of the NDVI values to fall in this outer set of bars. So that's the basic idea behind how we make forecasts using non-time series data. We fit a model to some predictors. We get a prediction for the value that those predictors will have in the future. And then we provide that prediction to our model to make a prediction for our outcome. We do this uh, prediction step using the same forecast function that we used for time series data, but the output will look rather different. Instead of producing a time series, we will get a series of predicted values, which we could then take out of the forecast object if we wanted to and turn them into a time series plot. How's the recording going today? How's the recording? Is it good and synchronized?